Imagine a missile crossing an entire continent in just a few minutes. That's the incredible power of the Boeing X-51 Wave Rider. Hidden from public eyes, a team of America's best engineers and scientists came together to create something the world has never seen before. Their task? Master one of the toughest challenges in aerospace engineering, generating thrust from a supersonic combustion ramjet engine known as a scramjet. At the time, it was like trying to light a match in a hurricane. Nearly impossible. In 1991, NASA had already cracked the scramjet technology, but putting it into an actual vehicle was a monumental challenge. The X-51 scramjet could accelerate to Mach 5, five times the speed of sound, which is over 3,800 miles per hour. At that speed, missiles could span oceans in the blink of an eye, revolutionizing warfare. But the risks were sky high. Only four X-51 prototypes would ever be built. All the pressure was on these final tests to get it right, or it could set hypersonic flight research back by years. But how did NASA come up with such impressive technology in the first place? And what happened to the X-51 project? The X-51A Wave Rider was the product of a daring dream to create a hypersonic cruiser capable of feats once thought impossible. This experimental vehicle resulted from a nationwide collaboration led by the U.S. Air Force Research Laboratory with partners like DARPA, Boeing, Pratt & Whitney, Rocketdyne, and NASA pooling their expertise. At first glance, the X-51A does not resemble a traditional aircraft. It featured a sleek, nearly wingless design of 25 feet long and 4,000 pounds, engineered to surf on its own shockwaves. This unique shape allowed for precise control at mind-blowing supersonic speeds, even when gliding unpowered. But the real star was the revolutionary scramjet engine. The scramjet consists of an air-breathing propulsion system optimized for blistering hypersonic flight. Unlike conventional jets, scramjets had no moving parts for compression. They relied solely on the vehicle's incredible forward speed to ram air inwards at supersonic velocities. This ingenious process allowed for higher combustion speeds and potentially record-breaking top speeds exceeding Mach 20 over 15,000 miles per hour. If it worked, the X-51A could redefine aeronautics and be a critical step towards hypersonic vehicles and weapons that seem as if from science fiction. With the theoretical groundwork for scramjet technology established through the multi-million dollar collaborative effort, attention turned to an extensive flight test program. The goal was to validate this radical new propulsion system's potential in the real world. However, the X-51A Wave Rider was a technology demonstrator, not a prototype for a future operational system. Only four test vehicles were manufactured in the U.S. Air Force. Most funding went towards the cutting-edge engine rather than reusable airframes in a calculated trade-off to control costs. There would be no second chances. The pressure was immense, but the potential rewards were worth taking every risk. Air Force leadership viewed the X-51A program as a potential game-changer, pioneering the knowledge base required for future hypersonic aircraft, weapons, intelligence platforms, and more. This was also a chance to test other innovative technologies, like thermal protection materials, airframe engine integration, and high-speed control. After a successful captive carry flight in 2009 to test the unmanned X-51A's handling and telemetry, the program stood at the precipice of a breakthrough. All eyes turned towards the flight test ranges at Edwards Air Force Base as the audacious aircraft prepared for its debut powered mission into aviation's highest speed regimes. The first test flight of the X-51 was initially planned for May 25, 2010. But the presence of a cargo ship traveling through a portion of the Naval Air Station Point Mugu Sea Range caused a 24-hour delay. On May 26, 2010, the X-51A Wave Rider etched its name into the history books by achieving the first ever scramjet-powered hypersonic flight. The momentous test began with the unmanned vehicle carefully tucked under the wing of a B-52 Stratofortress bomber. At 50,000 feet over the Pacific Ocean test range, the X-51A was released into the slipstream. Moments later, an Army tactical missile solid rocket booster kicked in, accelerating the cruiser to a staggering Mach 
nearly 3,700 miles per hour. With the rocket falling away, all eyes turn towards the X-51's revolutionary scramjet engine. If you're enjoying the video so far, be sure to subscribe for more awesome military content. The scramjet roared to life, initially burning a mix of ethylene and JP-7 jet fuel before transitioning solely to the kerosene-based JP-7 that had previously powered the legendary SR-71 Blackbird. Onboard sensor data streamed in real time to a nearby monitoring aircraft and ground stations at the Air Force bases. For nearly 200 electrifying seconds, the X-51A achieved what was once thought impossible, accelerating to a peak velocity of Mach 5 and climbing to 70,000 feet using an advanced air-breathing scramjet. Though an anomaly triggered its demise, this maiden flight successfully proved the potential of hydrocarbon-fueled hypersonic propulsion. Encouraged by the historic first success, the X-51 18 eagerly reviewed the flight data to prepare for the next test. However, the trials of experimental hypersonic flight were only beginning. On June 13, 2011, the second X-51A vessel took to the skies, carried by another mighty B-52 bomber. Like the previous attempt, the solid rocket booster successfully accelerated the vehicle to scramjet ignition speeds. But this time, disaster struck during the critical transition from ethylene JP-7 fuel mix to the cruiser's primary JP-7 propellant supply. An inlet unstart occurred, a potentially catastrophic situation where the precise shockwave stabilizing the supersonic airflow into the engine become disrupted. Scramjet engines require finely tuned shockwave and airflow conditions to operate, conditions virtually impossible to simulate on the ground. Despite all the efforts to restart the engine, the X-51A lost control and plunged into the Pacific. Though disappointed, program manager Charlie Brink remained optimistic. Every test is designed to push the boundaries, he stated. The data we've collected, even from a failed run, brings us closer to mastering this technology. In August 2012, the third X-51A attempted to reach even higher heights, a planned Mach 6 cruise lasting five minutes. But once again, disaster struck mere seconds into the flight as a control fin failure sent the vehicle tumbling uncontrollably into the ocean before the scramjet could even ignite. Nearly a year later, the program's last opportunity arrived, the fourth and final X-51A Wave Rider prototype. There would be no second chances to validate this revolutionary scramjet propulsion concept. It was either success or the team would have to accept their failure. On May 1, 2013, the last cruiser was carried by a B-52 mothership for one last flight. After reaching a high enough altitude, the cruiser dropped from the bomber's wing over the Pacific test range. The rocket booster worked flawlessly, accelerating the X-51A to well over Mach 4. Then, the moment of truth. The scramjet engine ignited gulping in volumetric amounts of supersonic air to combust with its JP-7 fuel supply. For over six glorious minutes, the X-51A firmly cemented its place in the history books. It became the first scramjet-powered hypersonic aircraft to maintain stable air-breathing propulsion, accelerating past Mach 5 and cruising over 230 nautical miles over the ocean. After burning its four-minute fuel supply, according to plan, the X-51A crashed into the Pacific Ocean and was destroyed. The final X-51A flight returned an unprecedented 370 seconds of hypersonic flight data, firmly achieving all of the program's test objectives. While no more vehicles were constructed, the $300 million technology demonstrator solidified hydrocarbon scramjet propulsion as a viable capability for further development. Even before the success of the fourth test, DARPA viewed X-51 as a stepping stone to black scope. This planned hypersonic demonstrator was canceled in October 2008. In May 2013, the U.S. Air Force planned to apply X-51 technology to the high-speed strike weapon, a missile similar in size to the X-51. The missile was expected to be operational in 2020 and entered service in the mid-2020s. It was to have a range of 500 to 600 nautical miles, fly at Mach 5 to 6, and fit on an F-35 or in the internal bay of a B-2 bomber. 
Born from the dreams of future high-speed aircraft and weapons, the X-51 program's breakthrough opened the doors to a new frontier of hypersonic atmospheric flight, unlike anything imagined before. And its legacy would inspire innovation for generations to come. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to subscribe to the channel, hit that like button, and turn on the notification bell to get notified anytime we post amazing videos like this.